because, and this is the way that I see it so important. I'm giving you guys operation. You guys can see I'm doing the same problem again, right? If you write this down again in your notes, you're going to see I'm dissecting information again and again. So no matter what your job is or what you're going to be able to do, the, the understanding of you know what to look for, you know the information, and if you dissect it, you can be able to break down the problem into what you need to understand. And that's what I'm trying to show you to do. This looks like a pretty crazy problem compared to the one I last did, right? Right? But if you notice, I'm going to give you the same information. We're going to go through the exact same definitions. So as long as you have a basis and an understanding of what you need to find, we can easily solve this problem. So what I'm trying to do is help you make, take something more complex and make it simpler for you to be able to understand. So again, the first thing we're going to do is determine our amplitude. And remember, the amplitude was the absolute value of A. Our A, in this case, is 2 thirds. So you have to know what your A is in every case. So remember, the amplitude, that's going to be the half distance between my maximum point on my graph and the minimum point on my graph. The next thing I do is I take the period. The period, remember, is going to be 2 pi divided by B. So we take a look at our b, and remember b is the coefficient of x. So you can say, what number is in front of x? We well, might say, well, that's a 1. Well, that 1 is being divided by 2. So you've got to be very careful and notice that even though your period, there's a 1 in front of there, it's actually 2 pi divided by 1 half. Right? And I'll state my case here real quickly. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 1 half times 4, correct? Right? So when you're dividing by that number, it's the same thing as multiplying it by 1 half, or whatever it is. So therefore, by simplifying this fraction, I get 4 pi. So that's our period. The next thing we do is we find our critical points. What is the, or the x scale? What's the difference between each of these points? So again, all we do is we take our period, and we divide it by so our critical point is 4 pi divided by 4, which is pi. All right? Then, if you guys remember, when we graphed the, the, um, the parent graph, we started at 0 and ended at 2 pi. So I want to see, is this transformation going to affect our period at all? So what we do is you take everything that's inside your function, so you're going to have that's, no wonder I was wondering. Um, so you're going to have uh, x divided by 2 minus 4 equals 0. And your endpoint is going to be x uh, pi divided by 4. And then your, <clears throat> your endpoint is going to be x divided by 2 minus pi over 4 equals 2 pi. So now let's go ahead and solve for x and see what we get. When we solve for x, we add pi over 4 to both sides. So we get x over 2 equals pi over 4 multiplied by 2 on both sides. And you get x equals pi halves. That means my graph, rather than starting at pi over 4, is going to start at pi halves. Then I solve for pi over here. So I add pi over 4. Um, pi over 4, so that would be 8 pi over 4, so therefore I'm going to get 9 pi over 4. Right? Because 2 pi is the same thing as 8 pi over 4. So if you add an extra pi over 4, then you're going to have 9 pi over 4. Then I multiply by 2 on both sides. And then we can kind of simplify this. So you get 9 pi over 2. So we'll go and see where exactly that's going to look at. So let's go ahead and graph this off. Let's go ahead and create our x scale. All right, and let's have 0, I don't know, let's have 0 be here. So we're going to say x equals 0 at this point. Now remember, there's four critical points that we have. 
our, the distance between our four critical points is pi. However, we're going to start at pi halves, right? This is our starting point, correct? OK. So at pi halves, that's our starting point. So if I add pi to pi halves, I'm going to have what? If I add pi to pi halves, the next step is going to be 3 pi over 2, right? If I add another pi over 2, I'm going to have 5 pi over 2, right? Add another pi, 7 pi over 2. And add another pi, I'm going to have 9 pi over 2. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, pi is the same thing as 2 pi over 2. And that's exactly what I'm adding, because remember, you've got to add them with a denominator of 2. right? That's why I'm adding the 2 on the top, and the 2's remaining the same. Okay, So that's what this is going to look like. We could also go in the negative direction. If I subtracted a pi, I would have negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, 1, 2, 3, and negative 7 pi over 2. Does anybody have any questions on how I created the scale? Because that's the main important thing. Really, if you guys can create the scale, first of all, you just need to be able to understand all this information. Then the next thing is understand this is my start. You're starting right here. So remember, there's four critical points, one, two, three, four, that we're going to create. The distance between each critical point is pi or 2 pi over 2. Pi and 2 pi over 2 are the same thing. So to go from here, to add 2 pi over 2, pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 is 5 pi over 2. You guys see how I'm keep on going with this? All right. So now we need to say we need to look at our cosine graph and say, what does the cosine graph look like? Remember, our cosine graph always had an amplitude of 1 and negative 1. That was its half distance. So therefore, if we didn't have a vertical translation, we could go up to 1. However, in this graph, our amplitude is not 1 anymore. It's 2 thirds. Yes? No, no. Um, the cosine, the parent graph of cosine, the amplitude was 1. Oh. The same thing for the sine graph as well. They both have amplitudes of 1. Yeah. All right. So you're going to go up to 1. However, in this one, our amplitude is not 1. It's 2 thirds. All right. Now, I don't have a something, but if I broke this up into thirds, right, roughly, you could say 2 thirds is going to be right here. So that means that's going to be my max height and my minimum height on my graph. So my starting point is going to start at 2 thirds as a max, because remember cosine at its starting point started at its maximum. Then the next critical point is the x-intercept. Then it goes down to the minimum, back to the x-intercept, back up to the maximum. So that would be like our initial period of our cosine graph with it being shifted over. And you can also just continue this down in the negative direction. And there you go. That's how you graph it. Cool.